Hello everybody and welcome back to the Petri Dish. We are in Chicago at Vimon and I've got Paul to my left and Anthony to my right. And uh, Anthony, what brings you to Vimon? <laughs> what brings me to Vimon? <laughs> uh, well, I work here at Vimon, obviously, it's, it's why I'm here. Uh, I work in the global uh, product strategy team under Danny Allen as a global technologist. So, yeah, obviously my team, uh, we're very much focused on the product at Vimon. We interact with uh, our customers, we interact with R&D and complete this feedback loop. So for us being here is really important because we get to talk to our customers, understand what the requirements are, mm -hmm. and then really that feeds into R&D. So in terms of vision for where we're going, that's kind of what we do. Very cool. This, well, I know this is Paul's, your second Vimon. I think this is my third yeah. or fourth. And it, it, it honestly is every year, it's just a little bit bigger. It seems like last year it was down and we were in New Orleans and this year, I mean, this place is packed. This place is good. This is, this, I think it's a step up from New Orleans. Not, not, not you know, no, saying no, that I, was bad. Right. It's a good place. It was good in its own We've way. observed the same thing. You know, right. but, uh, yep. but this place is, you know, it's, it, I think this is us. When yeah. you think about Veeam, think about where we're going as a company, the, what, what our aspirations are. You look at this center, you look at this facility. It's, it's really right. fits well with where we're going. It's a I nice think. modern place. It's exactly. spacious for yep. one thing. Yep. Last year felt a little, a little tight. Yeah. Uh, yep. Which is, honestly, it was a good thing for you guys because that meant you had too many people there. Yep. But, um, yeah. And another good thing about that as well is that, you know, this year we kind of, focus, as um, was spoken in the um, keynote this morning, we kind of said that this is going to be a North American focus event. Yeah, Okay. Sure. Um, but then, you know, obviously there's still some people, I'm, I'm from Australia, so I'm a long way away from home, but there's a few people outside of Europe and Australia that are here in Asia and in APJ, but it's really North American focused. Hmm. So to get the numbers that we've got and just have it be North American focused, it's actually quite an achievement as well. Right. And so I, I got to ask, what part of Australia are you from? Uh, Perth. The oh, west, oh, the west wow. side, the west wow. side. So, wow. yeah, I've got to travel. Are we still calling that Australia? Is that <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the most isolated city in the world. Yeah, um, wow. Good for Asia. Good for yeah. sort of yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to come to the states, it's always a big trip. But sure. Do I even want to know how how long that was? Oh, uh, okay. So, I can, well, generally speaking, if I say thirty hours, yeah. that's going to be pretty good. Uh, but usually, it's yeah, it's a it's a four hour flight plus a layover, then fifteen hours from Sydney four, to Dallas. Four hours, and then you get to leave Australia. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You, you went much, right across yeah, Australia. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, it's going to be a 20-hour, 30-hour door-to-door. Yep. Which I'm used to, though, because I've, I mean, I've, I come to VM Worlds, I come to AWS. I, we there, were so. delayed a couple hours because of rain, and we were complaining. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was actually quite lucky. So we arrived, I arrived on Sunday, and um, we got in 40 minutes early. And apparently it was unheard of. So much unheard of that we had to wait for the gate yeah. to be ready. Oh, yeah. So we actually yeah, yeah. ended up only being 10 minutes early. Yeah. But anyway. Interesting. Amazing. So let, let's just dive into what you mm -hmm. guys are talking about here. And uh, that you guys had a big keynote this morning. We talked a lot about the future strategy, going yep. in big into the enterprise. We even talked a little bit about Office 365 and some press stuff this morning. Yep. But for you, what you know, what were the announcements this week, and, and what's on your agenda? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, it's a little different this year again. Um, last year, we obviously announced um, some V10 features. Um, you know, and we had demos on stage. This year, we really want to focus on the vision and where we're going. Yeah. Um, you know. That's important to us. It's really about taking that next step into the enterprise and thinking about where Veeam's going to be in two to five years. Um, not just from a monetary point of view, because obviously everyone knows what, what we aspire to at that point. Sure. But talking about um, this being the trusted uh, source or trusted provider of intelligent data management. Um, that's really what we're about moving forward. And Danny was on stage. Danny's actually my, I guess, my big boss in terms of okay. product strategy uh, globally. He was talking about these five stages. So, you know, it goes from um, it goes from backup, aggregation, visibility, orchestration, and automation. I've got, I think I've got that right. Um, <laughs> I had to look it up. To be but, no, it's really about you know where our customers want to be. Right. So traditionally, coming from our install base of SMB, you know, customers are going to do backup and replication. That's mm -hmm. done. You know, and they're doing it still well. And for some customers, that's all they need. But as we move up the stack, as we move into this enterprise world, and even my background from a service provider perspective. Um, you know, we kind of worked as an enterprise. Service providers do kind of work as enterprise. Mm -hmm. So we kind of know about this quite well. But you really want to start to look at how you aggregate your data. So you've back, backed it up. How do you and then aggregate that data and make it useful for yourself? Okay. And then the next step is visibility. How do you then take that aggregated data and make it visible that to, in, a, in a state that you know now where your data is living? So it's aggregated in some place. It's now visible in some ways. Okay. okay? Right. So it's really, and once you've reached this this, this visibility point, you've really reached a, this this enlightened part of data. Um, you know, this this process we are going. I've backed up the data. It now lives in this aggregated location on our visibility for it. 
what can I do with the next? And that's where the next step comes in, which right. is your orchestration. And orchestration um, and automation, I guess those sorts of terms can be flipped around a little bit, but the way that we treat all the cool. <laughs> Apparently there's a car wreck inside yeah. the building. That's okay. We'll Believe it or not, that probably won't come out on the video. Yeah, yeah. we'll just go through the Mary yeah. actually band and start doing that as well, like last yeah. night. No, but then we work into orchestration. Orchestration is obviously in getting that data and making it work for you. When you've reached a stage, it's then, I've got a backup, I've got a machine that's gone down, I now want to orchestrate the recovery of that machine. Yep. Okay. Mm. Automation takes it the next step. Automation okay. is like this panacea, this, this, this end, end, end um, I guess, oasis of data management. And it really sits and says, okay, now that we can orchestrate, let's make things self-aware. And we're getting pretty scary at this point, right? Again, it's vision stuff. We, we want to basically go self-awareness. <laughs> it's, it's getting louder. Um, we'll just wait for it to go through. Probably won't drive through the back of this. No, nah, that won't go through. They must be breaking down the food. Yeah, right? in terms of automation, we still go? What? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, we're okay. If somebody was trying to make a lot of noise, they, they couldn't, do, they couldn't yeah, make more noise they, than that. They couldn't. Um, Automation just completes that cycle. And that means that, in a way, we're talking about how AI is getting a bit scary. Now, backup can be a bit scary. So, as an admin, you don't have to do anything. Sure. You kind of go, I've backed up my data, I can see it now, I know that we can orchestrate it, but if something happens, I'm now hands off in terms of this automation to bring it back, okay? If there's a event happening, like Danny mentioned, the uh, cyclones mm -hmm. and the floods that were happening, right? Yeah. Let's then plug into a system that, that monitors the weather, that monitors mm, gotcha. what's going on. That system then is intelligent enough to go, okay, I can see that a cyclone or a hurricane's approaching. Let's move our workloads from wherever it is to a place that's safe. This is that cycle, that completes the loop. So it's, it's, it's interesting when you think about it. It's, we're not quite there yet, but this is our vision. And I think that's yeah. the exciting part. It's really about the maturation of the company and just the market in general. Yeah, I, th I think so. Back up, you know, maybe back up a couple of years ago, even maybe today, even it's kind of yeah. maybe seen to be not cool. Yeah. You know, it, it's just it's something that just kind of is there. People don't really treat it as a first class citizen. Right. Um, mm. But obviously, more and more we understand now with data being you know, again, hi like, yeah, you know, hyper availability. That's how they mentioned that we talk about this data is hyper critical, yeah. hyper sprawl of data. Um, data is everywhere. It's now in more places that we ever dreamed it could be. How do we manage that? How do we make it work for us as well? And so hyper having, versus mission critical is almost yeah. just about the immediacy of it. Exactly. Yeah, it's mission critical, but it's also but hyper. It's, also, it's hyper. It's hyper. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's hyper, a big word. You know? Hyper speed is hyper uh, speed. Hyper yeah. available. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Gotcha. And so, what what is your role in this in Veeam? So Veeam is obviously a very large company, very, very fast growing company. Yeah. So what do you do? What is your daily role? My day to day. So my day to day, um, more recently with this product strategy group, as we are as a technologist, is to go and talk about our product as a solution. So we'll go and talk to customers, we'll try and say how we can solutionize that as opposed to talking about the tech. So right. we, we love the tech, and don't get me wrong, um, I still like digging into it, whatever. Sure, but sure. We're gonna make it work. So if we're looking at a backup solution, we're gonna try and say, okay, we've got backup replication. How do we maybe integrate that into making it work in AWS? Okay, if we've got some workloads in AWS, how do we take those workloads and bring it into our local Veeam backup replication repository? So it's really about taking solutions and, and Making people understand that you just don't click next, next, next. Mm -hmm. You've got to really think about how you um, how you plan these solutions for backup and availability. Um, that's one part of it. The other part is obviously integrating with customers to get feedback for the product. So okay. if someone, me, me being service provider focus, I talk to a lot of service providers, and you know we're releasing some cool stuff. Um, like we can't talk about it just yet, but coming up in update four, mm -hmm. when that gets announced, we're releasing some really cool stuff around our replication. Um, so maybe stuff with public cloud. We'll then get feedback on that, okay. feed it back, and R&D will then tweak it or maybe even improve on it. So sure. that's a big function. Very, very interesting. So how, how far out are we from version for yeah, the next version? <laughs> uh, I, ca I cannot say that because otherwise I will get a lot of trouble. No. Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're saying H2 uh, okay. this year, so it will be this year. Gotcha. So that's not very far off. No, it's not very far. I mean, we're going to release an interim version, so update 3A. That's not the only step on the way to this full vision of no, intelligent data. That, that, that's it's, right. It's, you know, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a partial it's thing a as we add these components. I mean, we're releasing to a more, I guess, what you could call a more um, controlled release cadence. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the okay. idea, as opposed to being yeah. when it's ready. Yeah. I mean, right. but I, I guess the flip side is when it's ready has its advantages. Sure. Because yeah, we, we, we are well, well known. Predictability to, has its advantages. Yeah. Too. We release some really, really good, robust software. And when it's yeah. out, there's not a lot of bugs. 
Um, right. So very stable software. Knocking some wood just. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously got <laughs> some bugs. Right, right, right. No, but, I know. But the thing is that we're releasing very stable stuff. So we don't want to lose that aspect of ourselves. The fact right. that it just works, old tagline, it still fits in today. So, yeah, and also we've obviously got other products shipping out as well. So um, availability, console, there's an update for that coming. We've got um, the Nutanix backup, which is close to being released. Mm. Um, um, being back up Office 365, which you mentioned earlier, yep. like that we're releasing a version 2.0 of that, sure. which has got support for SharePoint and OneDrive. So we're not just resting on that VBR. Like VBR is the platform okay. now that we work everything around, but we've got these peripheral products which are just as important to us. Right. Gotcha. You got any... Uh, where's the party? The party? <laughs> yeah. I think it's just across the road. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm not actually sure what to expect. I guess we can expect some good times. I, so did I, you guys come up to New Orleans? Yes. Yeah, so that was pretty good. That was one of the best ones. That was I, uh, yeah. Vegas was very good, oh, yeah. too. Yeah, I liked, I was there. So I've been. this is my third beam on. Yeah. The first one was a customer. Okay. The Omnia one was amazing. Really? Uh, yeah. that, that was fantastic. Last year was a great sort of, it was a new Orleans party. The, the, the whole vibe of it, I thought, was yeah. just really and neat. I think a similar thing is going to happen this year for okay. us. So we're going to bring in a couple of different acts. Yeah. Um, a few different bands will come through. Yep. So, nice. yeah, we're looking forward to it. Hey, and it's, it's good for, I can't actually drink or have a good time until tomorrow. No, night. neither anyway, can we. Yeah. yeah, you know. In theory, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I didn't even go to the bar last night. Yeah. Because at the no, we, hotel. We, we definitely didn't go to the bar. No, I, we, in fact, I don't think we ever left the bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it's a great location, yeah. I think, so it's going to be a good Excellent. night. You guys have great software, but I will say that you probably have even better parties. We have some very good I, parties. You're I, absolutely <laughs> leading the industry in that category. <laughs> in I, fact, if I can tell us, so that when I was getting quartered to come to them, yeah. it was actually during uh, VMworld. I don't tell my ex employee this because they might try and get the money back. Sorry, guys. But no, I was being quartered at that VMworld two years, uh, two years ago now. And um, the thing that didn't necessarily seal it, but the thing that actually made me think, well, this is awesome, was I went to that party. Yeah. And I was sitting there and I was a vanguard. So I was, you get an idea of the vanguard vanguard culture and, and, and what's yeah, going on. Yeah, that there. culture. Mm -hmm. I could see myself really yeah. loving this. And I went, yeah. you know what? I'm going to do this. That's great. And that was kind of at that party. And that was in so, Las Vegas. Yeah, I was pretty drunk. So maybe yeah, that had something to do with it. That's okay. <laughs> that Vegas party no, was no bad decisions. Oh, no, no, that was in Las um, Vegas. Yeah, that was Vegas. Yeah. yeah, Vegas. The Vegas party was that was nuts. Yeah, exactly. It was a very good time. Yeah. So, well, we appreciate you stopping okay, by. No worries. And uh, if people need to reach out or contact you, what's the best way to do that? Okay, so um, yeah, uh, my email address Anthony Spiteri at beam .com, or obviously social media is probably better um, yeah. at Anthony Spiteri. And I've got a blog site as well. Can I give that a little yeah, bit of absolutely. a blog? Absolutely. Yeah, cool. So I blog at Virtualization Is Life, which is uh, anthonyspiteri.net. Nice. There you go. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. And this wraps up another edition of the Petri Dish, and we'll catch you right back here next time.